Du. Du hast. Du hast mich. Yes. Freaking Germany. Here we go. What's going on? Well, fact, my name is Denari Kulf. Welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Geography Now Germany. This time, this is the promised land for many Bosnians. <laughs> because if you didn't know, most Bosnians today move to mostly Germany for work or for marriage or to stay permanently, including maybe even me one day. I'm seriously thinking about it, but let's not get into my personal uh, life. And uh, let's talk more about Germany, Deutschland, Niemetschka, as it's known as over here. Uh, this is why the uh, Slavs call it Niemetschka, because in many Slavic languages, Niem, Niem actually means mute, as in a person that doesn't you know, speak, of course. And Slovene, where the word uh, Slav comes from, actually means like a letter or a person that speaks the language. So in one sense, uh, because they were you know very close to each other geographically, uh, Niemetz would be somebody that doesn't speak the a Slavic language, and that's why we call it Niem. He speaks a different language, so he doesn't understand, you know, the language. That's how we actually call them Niemci. So technically, we call them mute people. I don't know. I, there's a lot of other countries that give a name, like uh, Sweden calls it Tuskland, right, or something like that. It's like uh, I don't know. Leave it in the comments below. So, uh, what what does Germany mean in like uh, your language? What, what's it What's it called? Because I know my my um uh, freaking uh, my sub sub base is mostly like multinational. So a lot of people speak many different languages. So yeah, share your thoughts below. Anyway, let's just get right into it. Drag for now, in Germany. Here we go, big boy. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Really? I miss some Germans, they're like oh, hilarious. <laughs> it's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one, begin. All right, level one. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, Smack bordered by nine middle. other countries. Don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North How and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundesländer, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already because discussed reasons. the Jungholz <laughs> Quadrapoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. mecklenburg vorpommern will be different from Saarland. This all... Okay, uh, now, smartass alert. Here's here's one of the reasons why uh, they developed a vastly different identity. Uh, well, not vastly different. What am I talking about? Uh, somewhat different identity, but they're still, you know, kind of Germans. Uh, many years ago, we will all, we, most of you know the Holy Roman Empire. Many of you played EU4 before. Uh, basically, it was a whole bunch of different uh, uh, small city-states. That was technically kind of an empire, but it was neither Holy nor Roman nor an empire. But uh, not getting into that now. Basically, uh, Germany is made up of many different river systems. Now, bear with me here. A lot of them are navigable, and but all of them flow in different directions. Notice how the Danube flows in a different direction, the Rhine flows in one direction, the Weser in another, and the Ober in another. So basically what this means is a lot of them traded with uh, different trading partners. If you if you're, get, get where I'm going. So basically every, where you live on a river, that's basically who you interact with the most on that navigable river. Uh, navigable rivers basically create nations like the Volga River Basin or the Yangtze River Basin. So I'm going to actually cut that part out. My uh, webcam actually fell off my uh, desk there. Don't ask how, but it just fell off. It was like so bored with my uh, freaking lecturing. He's just, oh my god, dude, shut up. So but I'm just going to finish it. Uh, so basically they interacted uh, somewhat differently, unlike where every other, very differently. And um, uh, 
very different. There was a lot of seats of power. Like there was uh, Bavaria, which was pretty powerful. Berlin, which was pretty powerful. Hamburg, which was pretty powerful. Uh, the the Rhineland, or like uh, close to uh, it was uh, Essen. Uh, around that place uh, th it was pretty powerful so they were all like competing against each other while uh, in uh, France it's mostly just the Parisians that are su supreme and nobody can really stand up to them so this is why the, the French were more centralized historically and the Germans more federalized historically oh my god okay we're done don't fall off camera god damn it <laughs> don't embarrass me like that again and, and recent history basically in the quickest way I can summarize this Germanic tribes Roman Wars Charlemagne three yep. kingdoms yep. this guy marries mm -hmm. an Italian creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms states and dukedoms which had nothing to do with Romans Teutonic totally Knights, gonna work. became Prussia <laughs> Habsburgs became Austrians Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians wars wars battles battles Napoleon comes over and messes everything up and and finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta... Yeah, so Germans lived uh, outside of what we know today as Germany. They've kind of lived everywhere. Even like around the Volga Basin re uh, region, they even lived there. So basically what happened was uh, after World War One and World War Two, they decided to... Uh, they called it an ethnic uh, reconfiguration, I believe, but it was technically an ethnic cleansing of Ger Germanic peoples uh, to make sure that Germany wouldn't be that powerful again, because it was crazy powerful at the time, if you couldn't tell. Scramble obviously. for some colonies, and that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can say Germans <laughs> colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states States is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are general. And even to this day, he, he might mention it, if I just wait one second, but even to this day, the eastern part of Germany is still uh, somewhat behind from the western part, which is much more, you know, wealthier. I believe like the western part has uh, an average uh, GDP per capita of like $60,000, while the eastern part has, in some parts, like only $28,000, which is still pretty good, but for German standards, not that good. Really not as well off economically as the rest of the country. <laughs> there we go. One you can second. Still see the blocky Soviet-style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half, and the west mm -hmm. side was actually an enclave of West Germany, only accessible by yeah, train and hot, highway. So you can I even see from water. a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the west still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Not everywhere. Now, the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at Dusseldorf. Dieseldorf. <laughs> Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Brandenburg. Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Ooh. Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's... I was about to say that, but I decided to wait one the second. <laughs> Castle. Germany also has over 400 cities, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and why those cultivated countrysides can get time for level two how many levels are there Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mudflats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything it's just like kind Mont of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, mm -hmm. with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Zugspitze. Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is mm -hmm. arable, and another third is woodland. And after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley. Due to its position sandwiched between the Arctic America. blasts <laughs> of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, I Germany can be an thing, atmospheric so. <laughs> war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absa freak absolutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten-free? Nein! Oh, yeah, and uh, when my mother was, my mom worked uh, 
actually in Germany at one point, and she would always bring back like something from Germany. Man, their food is freaking awesome, and their bread. I could just eat the bread alone. That's how good their bread is. And uh, yeah, so hopefully one day uh, I'll try all of them at once. <laughs> Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to what cook about a beer? Egg. Over 50 different types beer? of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsaxe, and at a big party you might find spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme. I don't all like how he pronounces the Germ German. Beer after the Czech Republic. I mean, it's not bad, no but with public intoxication and Austria. <laughs> Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only uh, uh here beer over here in Bosnia is really not that good, but I actually tried some German beer. My mom actually brought German beer back over here at home, and uh, it's a lot better than Bosnian beer. I can tell you that. Only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing brewery in the Bein world, started Stefan. by Benedictine monks in 1040 Duist. AD, can be found here. Germany takes that. the environment very seriously, and for the past two decades, has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practice. Yeah, the problem with them and solar power is if uh, you actually look up in Germany, you'll notice. Uh, it's mostly mostly cloudy most of the year for them so unfortunately there it's not as effective it's a good uh, thing they're doing but it's not as effective as it would be in uh, different parts of the world this is like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge how do you install a home installed turbine like one of those like giant wind turbines can I just stick that outside of my house and <laughs> it would, wouldn't it be like super loud like what does he mean by surgeons in the past 10 years? Forests dominate the southern regions oh, where beautiful. the landscape gets hilly and mountainous. All the most day. famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving really? in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional America. engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of, like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole I'm going with Adidas being a slob. <laughs> Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be this like is the Serbia, guy who got actually, out of rehab, down here. with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country like has me. about 82 <laughs> million people and is the most populated I might be EU, German. second most in Europe, we should be not Russia, in Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Africans and Americans. Also, they use the euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the Union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second Which is most why it's popular very global migration globalized. destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government-subsidized universal health care system. Uh, same, same down here in Bosnia. If you're accepted and you, you're not you know uh, an associate going for an associate's degree it's mostly free it's like a hundred maybe 200 marks a year but eh, that's basically free you can find that money anywhere easily I mean system about a quarter is still privatized and state pension for retirement at age 65 now when it comes to language things get a little tricky each state kind of has their own kind of funny how uh, uh, a small fairly not so well off country like Bosnia can have like health care and uh, free education but countries like America cannot that's telling you something about how awesome just europe is type of german so, sorry to by, sorry to my germans americans but many americans would agree with me high german which is the standard dialect the european charter however protects the minority languages of frisian danish romani sorbian which is like a slavic based language used along the czech polish border and plat i never know if they are like uh, related to serbian because obviously that would that looks like Serbian. Or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by Flat the Amish Deutsch. and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics. Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was... By the way, the Southern Germans are more Catholic, Northern Germans more Protestant. The part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets, Sorbian can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40... Oh yeah, this is what uh, is their like nickname down here in the, the Balkans, Schwabe. It comes from Swabian. 
Sometimes we call them Schwabe. Eight percent of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, half-timber beer houses, and cuckoo clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of stereotypes, some of the what? stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough. This is probably and all true. <laughs> words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen. But in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss. And in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound words that get really long and complicated like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungsüberwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. Really? Let me try that. Let me try that. Get, get the fuck over here. Rindfleischer, Ticketierungsaufgaben. Getierungsüberwachungsaufgaben über Tragungsgesetz. How's my how's my German Germans? Technically not a word anymore. Isn't this like when somebody like really has to like get slapped? I know that was like a word in German. Gesetz. <laughs> this is because many words are mehrtudig or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesetz. That's the one. Not That's the one. this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes S a double S sound. However, mm -hmm. spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. In. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. Sponge About 60% of German. the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of Jews, what it's like eh? in German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After I'm World surprised. War II, okay. they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until yeah. the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic mathematics and science yeah, we have that down universities. Here. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market we have in the, the same EU thing down and here. the third in the world Not that the successful, US but Japan. They something. love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras, mostly supported by public money. And artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to What? Let me get the, let me see that. <laughs> Shut up. This is way more important than the uh, video. Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Vergangenheits Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have Do not feel guilty for your past. You had nothing to do with it. Well, just look at our past in the Balkans. Oh, man. <laughs> Was it fucked up? But still, I had nothing to do with it. Neither do uh, a lot of the young uh, Serbians out there and the young Croatians out there. Okay, we, let's just get along. <laughs> we have nothing to do with our past, okay? Same goes for, like, the Germans. Just, come on, okay. We get it. People went to war back then. They tried to take territory. Okay, people were greedy. We get it. Now, stop feeling guilty for yourself. Just... Man up. <laughs> reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride and unless if you're at a soccer game chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a german flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting it's weird but it's kind of how things are you monster they've made great strides to move on from the past on, nazi flags flag. and mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in germany by the way i was at a bookstore and no joke i actually saw mein Kampf, uh in bosnian of course but it's allowed down here it's not allowed up there well obviously it's not like he's gonna be coming back. Come on. Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volksverzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on. They did speech. happen. Others but... say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein. Although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the U.S. and became an American. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher. 
Alex von Humboldt, <laughs> and of course, yeah, Karl Marx totally and Friedrich that Engels name. co-founded Marxism. <clears throat> One thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans you have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West hey, Germany during the Cold War <laughs> and after reunification, they were like, Woohoo! Ooh, we even love Germany. better. And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The U.S. is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the U.S. to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as no the comment. Turks make up the largest <laughs> Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France though is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background managing all the money and logistical work. In God conclusion, it. although Germanic money. peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around They've kind of gone through some of the most intense United. world revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Through Yet they've come out working Bloody hard United. and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. Okay, but first, the flag. This should be good. Hey, Jabber. Oh, is this on? Yes, it is. Hey, Jogger peeps, welcome back to Flag Friday. So, little disclaimer, I'm going to start using Flag Friday as kind of like a platform to address the mistakes I made in the country episodes. Okay, so in the Germany episode, I misspelled Wirtschaftswunder, and technically it's not completely illegal to own Nazi memorabilia in Germany. I believe it's illegal to sell it or produce and print Mein Kampf, but it's not illegal to like own it. I'm not sure. You Germans have a lot of weird laws. Also, I believe just Beethoven come down was Bosnia, actually Bosnia. born in a German city, not Belgian, but there was somebody who was Belgian on his family. I don't, it's confusing. I think there are a few more things, but that, those were like the biggest ones. We're here to cover the German flag. Now, this is going to be a little hard because there's a lot of backstory and it's going to be really confusing using and I might even probably get a few things wrong with this but I'm gonna try my best all right so without further ado ah Germany don't make them get all Wirtschaftswunde on you or else you'll end up Vergangenheitsbewaltigung. So anyway, the flag. The flag is a we horizontal need a color of black, down red, here. and gold. Remember, it's gold, not yellow. And that's sure where the animation is, is going to have to stop because technically there isn't an official symbolic interpretation of the colors of the German flag. And a lot of people will disagree on where exactly the colors are derived from. Here's what we do know. Sometimes the colors are referred to as the Weimar Republic colors, named after the Weimar Republic, which took over the country after World War I and was first adopted as a national flag in 1919. However, that wasn't the first time the flag appeared in German history. The first time it appeared was actually in the 19th century during the 1948 revolutions or the March revolutions in which pan-Germanism was just starting to develop in its early stages as the Holy Roman Empire was dissolving and all that Napoleon stuff was going on. It was kind of like an on and off used flag until the German Empire came and used the black, white, red configuration. Some I people like say that, that the black and white colors were derived from the Teutonic Order in which they used black crosses on white fields to identify themselves, whereas the Holy Roman Empire used a white cross on a red field so they kind of felt compelled to kind of like mesh those three colors together. But how did the gold come into play? Here are some of the most prominent theories. Back in the day, most of what is Germany today lied in the Holy 
Roman Empire, which funny enough had nothing to do with Romans. And the flag for the empire was a yellow banner with a black eagle mm -hmm. sporting a red beak and talons. Okay, fair enough. However, some people will say that it's also inspired from the uniforms of the Lutzo Free Corps, a militaristic group of volunteers who fought against Napoleon in the 1800s as they wore black uniforms with red trims and gold buttons. However, it's also said that in 1919, the three colors were attributed to the three main political parties, the Democratic, the Centralist, and the Republican parties of Germany. However, many vexillologists might say that in the long run, the red might be derived from the Hanseatic Light. League, oh. which was like a commercial confederation on the north shores of Germany and other North and Baltic Sea states in the 14th century, whereas the black and gold are most likely probably attributed to the Austrian Empire, as the Austrians were kind of seen as like Germans back then. I don't know. You guys decide what story you like. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, this flag <laughs> was actually the flag of both East and West Germany for about 10 years until East Germany was like, hmm, we got to kind of set ourselves apart and distinguish ourselves from West Germany. So they put an emblem in their flag and then they finally reunited in the 90s. Speaking of which, that brings us to the coat of arms. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, it looks just like the Holy Roman Empire flag. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, good eye, good eye. That's where it's kind of derived from. But there's a lot of backstory behind that too. The symbol of the eagle goes way back. Like, Roman times way back. The Aquila, or the Eagle, was a prominent image used hey, in various background. Roman symbols. <laughs> After a while, the Byzantines adopted it, but it was like a double-headed eagle at the time. Then in the 13th century with the whole... And a double-headed eagle, one of the heads re represents religion, the other head, the state. When Empire, Frederick II granted the Imperial Eagle on a golden shield to his state. Of course, over the years, variations of these images evolved Usually. over time. Of course, Nazi Germany kind of screwed things up, but essentially it's the Imperial Eagle happen. stayed throughout the ages. Except in East Germany when they became their own state. For about 35 years, they used the hammer and compass on a circular emblem emblazoned oh, by sheaves of wheat on each side with a German tricolor banner below. Fun side note, East Germany almost used a black, red, white configuration flag and West Germany almost considered using a Nordic cross pattern. Wouldn't that be kind of interesting if Germany actually ended up with this flag? Well, that was a country. boatload of information that I am trying really hard right now to pretend like I completely understand myself, but deep down inside I'm actually Germanic. secretly very blank. This has been Flag Friday. You've okay, just been Paul, flagged. Whatever. Ah, Germany. Maybe we'll see each other one day. So my uh, Germany, German uh, wolf pack. Maybe we'll see each other one day. Maybe we'll be neighbors. But that's a different story. But thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.